Good morning Good and morning. thank you for joining the parishes of Conwell Union and Garton for Prayers at Home. If you have the Church of Ireland Book of Common Prayer or our liturgy card for morning prayers, it'd be helpful to have that in front of you. In the Book of, I uh, in the Book of Common Prayer, it begins on page 101. If you don't have the words, don't worry. You can still listen and join in in your heart, for God sees the prayers of our heart. Today, Reverend David will give a short talk about God's power in our lives. So we look forward to that in a few minutes. And as we begin now, let's remember that wherever you are, God is with you. He knows you and he loves you. So let's pray together. God, our Father, we thank you for all your care for us, for all that you have provided us with, for all that you have done for us. Help us to have open hearts to you as we pray together now. Amen. Amen. So we begin on page 101 or on this liturgy card. And maybe you'd like to join in with the words that are in bold. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let's pause to consider our need to confess our sins to God. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our readings can be found on the weekly sheet, if you have that, or in the Bible, beginning at Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. And once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby. A rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the centre, round the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and behind. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all round, even under its wings. Day and night, 
they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give, give glory, honour and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 35. Jesus' power over nature and over evil. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. But Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied because many demons had gone into him and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind and they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, those are both quite stunning readings, aren't they? About God, the power of God, the power of God seen in Jesus. Jesus showed in those, what happened in the, uh, in those two things that happened on the lake, in the storm, and on the land 
with a demon-possessed man, that he has power, power over nature, power even over evil. And it must have been an awe-inspiring time when you're with Jesus, mind-blowing, we might say nowadays, that he could just shut down a storm like that with his words. And he could free a man who had been in the grip of terrible torments and evil. You might be surprised to know that there are still diocesan exorcists nowadays. Thankfully, in what's been Christian world, there's very little evil compared to some parts of the world that needs dealing with spiritually. But really, it is needed. And it can still be a problem. And uh, especially when people dabble in the occult, like witchcraft and stuff like that. And it's not the sort of thing you learn a lot about at theological college. And uh, But at the end of my training, they gave us about three weeks of practical talks about the practicalities of being in ministry. And this was a, a posh university where we had lots of great lectures and theology and wonderful intellectual things and all sorts of history and uh, ethics, teaching and wonderful. We knew all about the scriptures. And we got to these three weeks. And one of the talks was by one of the tutors from the university. And he said, I'm now going to tell you about exorcisms. And I was kind of like, what? It's not what you expect at a posh university. And he tell, told us how he, when he, I think he was a curate, he, he lived in a part of, uh, he ministered in part of the UK where there was some horrible stuff going on. And he'd been called by the vicar and told, look, there's this family, they've got a problem with a daughter, she's in all sorts of spiritual mess. And I've got the diocesan exorcist coming to help. And I want you to go with him to get experience. Anyway, he described what it was like. This poor girl was in a terrible state. And it was pretty horrible. So I'm not going to go into details. And the exorcist, of course, delivered her from that evil. Jesus can free people from the worst of things. And even today, sometimes, even that is still necessary. Thank God we don't encounter evil very much ourselves. But Jesus has the power, and his people have the power to free people from all sorts of horrible things. In the land of the Gerizines, as we heard, that man is freed from some awful, awful spiritual situation. The effect on the local people was fear. They were afraid because they'd known what a terrible spiritual situation that man was in and how everybody was just scared to stiff of him. And now suddenly there he is sitting at Jesus' feet in his right mind, all the devil evil stuff gone. And they heard what had happened with the herd of pigs and they were full of fear. Now there's a good sort of fear and a bad sort of fear. And fear and respect for things that are powerful is really important, whether it's people who are powerful and be treated with respect, or whether it's physical things. And um, when I worked in the chemical industry, I worked for a firm which manufactured huge equipment. And I did the small work in the laboratories designing and things that would do the job. And then they'd make huge copies which would go into big process equipment. And some of them were made of plate steel or even titanium, which is very, very tough stuff used for aircraft, maybe this thick. And they had plasma cutters, which could cut straight through it, and bending machines, which could take a huge plate of this thing and just flip it over like it's a tin pan, using a, a huge amount of power. It was amazing to see. And that's just a small amount of power, of course, compared to the power which Jesus exerted by his word to still a storm or to deliver somebody from evil or when he 
it could, um, healed somebody brought them back from the dead. There's power going out into that. And of course, the creator of the hero universe exerted its unbelievable amount of power. To think that the one sun we have is incredibly powerful. There's billions of suns in the whole universe, and God made a lot. The power required to do that is just mind blowing. God is really powerful. On Earth, he was really powerful and at a human scale. And that deserves our respect and fear in the sense of knowing who we're dealing with. And so in that first Bible reading, we had a vision of St. John of the throne in heaven. And you could feel the power that he's portraying, the brightness like a rainbow and jasper and ruby colours. And then from the throne comes flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And in front of the throne, the seven lamps were blazing. It's show, show, it's portraying the power of God in a vision. And also, of course, these 12, these 24 elders are with crowns and white robes are being given by God. So every time the living creatures worship God, they just fall down in awe and fear, awestruck by God. Amazing. And say that you are worthy, our Lord and God to receive glory and honour and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. <clears throat> God created everything, and he sustains everything with his powerful word. And that's the sort of respect, that awe, that fear of God, is something that we need as Christians not to forget, but to respect and stand in awe of who God is. And that helps us to remember that this life is important because as we'll pray a bit later on, we are living our lives, walking, remembering that we're walking in his sight. And God, he loves us. God loves everything he's made. He wants us all to turn to him. But it is serious if we don't. And of course, if we, in the end, if we won't turn to him, if we reject him, then he will reject us. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of Almighty God. And we need to remember how powerful he is and how loving and how kind and how Jesus was such a great saviour, even dying to take the punishments we deserved. So I'm going to say we pray. And then we'll get on with our rest of our prayers this morning. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the redemption that Jesus, you bought for us by dying for us. And the Holy Spirit's presence with us. Help us to be, to fear you in the right way, with respect and awe. Remembering that you see us, that you care for us. And you want us to walk remembering that we are walking in your sight and then to be with you forever where everything is perfect and pure and good. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Something for us to think about. And let's remember as we turn to God in prayer that he is powerful to intervene in our lives and the lives of others today. If you have the Book of Common Prayer, turn to page 112, or on the liturgy card, it's on the third side. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and and the the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. And let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And renew us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to trust in you amid the storms of life. Grant that we may seek out the perishing, the troubled and the lost. May we be seen to uphold those who are overwhelmed and distressed. And we pray particularly for those who work among those who cannot cope for themselves. Mighty God, come to us and give us your peace. We pray for all who feel they are sinking amid the storms of life. For those who are suffering from depression. For those who are in dangerous or violent situations. We pray for all who have been affected by the recent storms and floods. And we pray for places in the world where there is not enough rain or where crops have failed. Mighty God, come to us and give us your peace. Lord, we pray for all we know who are sick, all who are in nursing homes, and we pray for healthcare workers. Mighty God, come to us and give us your peace. And loving God, we remember loved ones departed. And we pray for all who mourn, particularly all who have lost loved ones during this COVID pandemic. Mighty God, come to us and give us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, You stilled the waves and you calmed the storm. Uplift us and enfold us in your peace. Amen. Amen. The collect for the second Sunday before Lent, which can be found on our weekly sheet. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And on page 114, or on the back of our liturgy card, the prayer beginning, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, in In whom whom we live live and and move and and have our being, we we humbly pray pray that that your Holy Spirit Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life life, we may may never forget your presence, but may remember that that we are always walking in your sight through through Jesus Jesus Christ Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Today, Sunday, the 20th of February, there are services.
uh, 10.30 in Conwell Church and 12.30 in Garton, and they will be led by Reverend Mervyn Peebles. And next week, Sunday the 27th of February, we have a very special event in Conwell Church. Please do come to church next Sunday at 10.30, because this is our welcome back service and celebration. If you haven't been to Conwell Church for a long time, please do come along. Please invite others. Think of those who cannot get to um, church themselves. If you can offer somebody a lift, please do. It would be a short service. Uh, we will have a much loved hymns there uh, with organist John Dawson. And afterwards, we will have a celebration tea in the hall. Do please come along and join us. It would be a wonderful time to be together like this again. Thank you for being with us today. Reverend David and I are praying for you and we hope to see you soon. Until then, God bless and goodbye. Yes, look forward to meeting up next week if you can possibly make it. I think it would like be lovely at the end of this pandemic to be together again. So until then, God bless. Goodbye.